the the way to build the, a component like this, to build an improvised explosive device such as this, the information is readily available in open sources for books and, and, and the internet, of course. Um, I think uh, instead of crude, that simple is the best adjective to apply here because it, it, it's easy to put together, easy to practice in detonating a device like this on the lead up to actually placing it uh, where the terrorists would and um, really quite deadly effective. One of the things we've been talking about uh, in the last day and a half in this investigation is how law enforcement officials will be looking for a bomb-making signature, uh, some sign that shows what type of person put it together, where they may have received their instructions. Based on what you know, as you're looking at these pictures, are, are these the type of things that give you a sense of that signature? Uh, absolutely. Really quite reminiscent of uh, some major cases I'd worked on a uh, while with NCIS. Um, Using a device like this, often, almost always, there are components left behind that the, the crime scene processing and forensic technicians making the initial assessment and even, even chemical tests, that's being matched up right now at the national uh, center known as TDAC at Quantico, Virginia, uh, where such things as, um, for example, it will be confirmed whether the device deflagrated, which would indicate a lower order explosive, or if it detonated, would, which indi would indicate a higher explosive. All of these uh, items to talk about here produce leads for investigators to run down. You know, Robert, uh, John and I were talking in the commercial break, remembering back to the, the Olympic Park bombings in 1996 and the, the process that those investigators went through, you know, finding the nails that were shot out of the bomb, tracing the nails back to the manufacturer and ultimately finding, amazingly, um, Eric Rudolph. In this case, can you just walk us through the process that these investigators uh, will be going through in terms of looking very closely at these little BB-like metal objects in the, the pressure cooker itself? Right, a tremendous amount of material would, would be found and is still being recovered, I'm sure, at the, at the crime scene in Boston. Those items will go to the, the analytical cell at the National Center at the lab in, in Quantico, and be, the, the attempt now is to match up anything recently or even longer history of devices of similar components and composition. Um, also, too, uh, some of the items left behind, uh, such as BBs or small nails or other components that would have been inside the pressurized device, this represents the secondary fragmentation element. That may also match up with other components or other, or the other IEDs in the past that would tend to indicate that, that a group or individuals behind this. However, however, there's such a broad spectrum of different individuals and groups that use this kind of simple device. Um, that, that could be quite some uh, time for detective work in that regard. What a tedious but necessary process to, to try to figure out who did this and then the next, uh, you know, question why. Uh, Robert McFadden.